Hello and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjwer and today I'm joined again with conceptual photographer Jason McGrawerty. Thank you for staying with me um, and in this part of the show I would love to know more about all the technical side of how you do what you do and in particular I want to know about the cat and how you get the cat into the outfits and what the outfits are made of. The costumes themselves sometimes are easy to make so it could be like a loose fabric, it might be a shirt that's already constructed and I'll rip it apart oh. and hand stitch it back together which I'd never done before I just Learned. decided to jump in and do it. Um, the head, some of the head pieces I've done, like I've done a Victor Rolf inspired piece where it's made completely by scratch. So it's like lace, cardboard, everything. And it's a massive head piece wow. on the cat, yeah. And she sat there, no problem, yeah. What a trooper. Yeah, oh, cardboard. Like, what about the Jedi one? Oh yeah, that's, um, it was just some old robes. One of the biggest critics that I get is her eyes turn different colors. Her eyes are like a bluey brown green. But oh. I notice when I'm using like a warm lighting, the green comes up in her eyes. It'll reflect yeah. in her eyes. Yeah. yeah, and if I use like the blue lighting, the blue will come up in her eyes. Okay. And it's really, really powerful. It's, you notice so, it straight away. Do people think that it's a different cat or yeah. something? Different cats is the ah, big one. Stop. Yeah. And then I would kind of construct different wheat pieces from old fabrics lying around the house, gather them all together, and I would build up a, a portfolio of what I'm actually going to do. So there'd be scheduled shoots that we need to hit. And right. working with the cat then, you can't really say, right, it's Tuesday morning, we have a photo shoot, now hummus, sit down. Give her a roster yeah, for the get week. Get yourself ready because, yeah. you know, you never know. All the props, backdrops are all handmade. Okay. So they're customised for each individual shoot. Wow. Even down to, like, well, before we went to New York, we'd done, like, the Cat of Wall Street shoot. Yeah. And so I found myself, it was just the night before we were leaving to get on the plane. And I had all my cash converted into US dollars. And so it's about 2 a.m. at night, I find myself making it rain onto the cat. And yeah, <laughs> She's just like, yeah. <laughs> every once in a while you have to take a step back and go, what am I doing? And what about in terms of lighting then? How would hummus be lit? I hand built the studio that we use for her. So it's actually the kitchen counter in my house at the moment. And the backdrops all handmade. Yeah. The lighting that I made is handmade. It's like cat sized softbox lighting. It's made out of a shoe box. A stretch t-shirt yeah some old so light. a shoe box you've cut a hole out of yeah put just a cut t-shirt over for a diffuser yeah and then what just shoved like a lamp in or something you can use lamps or you can use an led light yeah cool but just and it's lined with tin foil there's a little bit of a paper layover on top just to diffuse it a little bit better because the fabric's hard to come through yeah. such a good cat i feel like i know her because i've been i've been looking i've been pawing through your book <laughs> <laughs> Please forget I said that. But um, yeah. yeah, she has her own book, which is amazing. So yeah. I mean, it's um, it's a really beautiful layout. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. It's I mean, like, even just like the the, the foil printing on it. Yeah. I love this book, <laughs> and um, I definitely feel like I know her. Uh, when when did you release the book? We released it last year. Um, I teamed up with the guys at Michael O'Mara and Lucy o O'Mara, and they published the book for me and there's 32 images in the book altogether, and each individual image has a different theme or like costume ideas. You must spend hours building stuff for I'd say shoots. I spend more time planning than shooting. Yeah. So as long as you know what you're getting into, then you're able to kind of mix and match when you're actually there. You know, cool. you give yourself more freedom when you're actually in the studio shooting it or if you're out on location shooting it. And then in, in your, your, you know, your, your non hummus life, when you're doing your Totem series or the new series that you've got coming up, what kind of gear would you use? I've used the very same gear that I've ever always had. So I started off with no camera, borrowed an, uh, an F4, yeah. Nikon F4. And then when I got my first camera, it was on my 21st birthday, I got a D3100. With it, just a standard lens kit, 18 to 35, and that's what I used for years. I, I just use whatever I have, as long as it takes photos, as long as you know how to work lighting. Mm. Your composition's a big one, you know, and think about your visual narrative and what you're actually doing. And once you have those things down, you're fine. Yeah. I tell people that all the time on this show. It's like, I don't replace a camera when, you know, everyone says I should replace it. I replace it when it's dead and yeah. it doesn't work anymore. And now, you know, my phone has more megapixels than my camera and I'm like, yeah. I'm okay with that. Megapixels. Yeah, yeah. megapixels. Stop. Doesn't mean, as long as they compress well, yeah. yeah. As long as you got your lighting right, it's all fine. Like I would use 
the same camera now at the same time, you know, the 3100. Yeah. And that I recently upgraded, I got the um, D600. Yeah. So I upgraded, which is the first uh, of the Nikon brand going into full frame. Yeah. So it's like an introduction to full frame. Yeah. And I use a crop sensor 35, 1.8. Cool. Cheap, cheerful. In terms of the post-production, would you spend, well, while, well, it looks like you spend an awful lot of time on your computer editing. No, I actually try and do as much in camera as I possibly can. And so I'll shoot, do whatever I possibly can to make it look good in the camera. If I yeah. look at it and it looks fine, that's great. And then I bring it over into camera raw, make any adjustments, highlights. I have a horrible tendency to overblow my highlights. And recently with the upgrade to the D600, it's got horrible like color fringing. Yeah. Oh, it does, yeah, you're... Yeah, especially with the crop sensor with lens. So I just, yeah. I would adjust that, you know, in, in Photoshop, there'd be little tweaks and things like that I would do, but mainly I just shoot in camera, try to get as much done as I could possibly do in there. And then like Photoshop is for your extravagant elements, you know, if for instance, like in Totem, I had to slice three images together, you can't do yeah. it in camera at all. And <laughs> lightsabers and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, we don't all have lightsabers lying around, you know. No, yeah. well, I might, <laughs> <laughs> but that's another episode. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. I love your approach to it. It's just really natural, really tactile, and you're building stuff and you're making your cat sit there with treats. It's brilliant, it's so refreshing to hear. Um, I can't wait to see your next projects, if you're gutting fish and doing bits and pieces. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think for anyone watching then, if they don't follow your Instagram or Hummus's Instagram as well, that they should really get over and do that now. Um, I can't wait to see way more. Thank you so much for joining you're me welcome. today. Cheers, thanks yeah. for that. Well, that's all we have time for in this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, then check out the Adorama Learning Centre. And if you'd like to watch more videos, then subscribe to our channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again real soon.